My first recollection of Kiowa is I got a key through the auspices of the then owner to come fish the island, and it was just nothing but one simple dirt road to get over the dunes and fish up and down the beach all day long, and it was heaven. We would fish those sloughs up from low tide to high, and we would fish for the channel bass and, and uh, spot tails and redfish, they're alternately called, and just have a ball. This is the story of Kiowa Island. It's the realization of a few men who had a vision, and they set out to bring it to life more than 30 years ago with a lot of hard work and a master plan that promised to nurture and protect Kiowa's natural beauty. This was always the ultimate uh, land on the East Coast to, to try to sensitively develop, to try to do it right, try not to mess it up. You've got this wonderful forest with, with water all the way around. And it's in one way on and one way off. And it's just, it's a miracle of an island. The environment is probably the number one reason that people choose to buy property and to live at Kiwa. It's probably the most beautiful maritime forest in all of the low country. The commitment to Kiowa now is not a financial commitment. It's an emotional commitment. In the mid-90s, we did one of the largest conservation easements that was done in the country. There was land that was at the very eastern end of the island, and we donated that to Ducks Unlimited. One of the environmental aspects that, that we talk about a good bit is we have a great uh, population of loggerhead turtles that visit here and lay their eggs every year. One of the things we put in the original covenants for Kiowa was that on the ocean front, lights on the buildings have to be turned away from the ocean. You can't have a spotlight on the side of the building out toward the ocean because it confuses the hatchlings after the mothers come up and lay their eggs in the dunes once they hatch. I've never seen a beach that has 10 miles of just beautiful dunes, a very wide beach. Uh, we have about a six foot tidal range, so that gives you a several hundred foot wide beach, low to high. And it just goes on and on and on as far as you can see. They're hard packed sand, they're very wide, they're great for swimming. In addition to the 10 miles of beach, there's 30 plus miles of, of marsh edge and river edge. So. 40 miles of marsh and waterfront surrounding this island just gives a large portion of the property owners here access to, to see that incredible view. The second key element is the city of Charleston. And Charleston is, uh, used to be called one of America's best kept secrets. It's not a secret anymore. And the fact that Charleston is so nearby and that Key was able to interact with it so closely just makes the combination even better. But we do have great cultural events and then its architecture. We probably have the best restaurants for any city our size. If you boat and sail and fish and, and recreate on the water, it, it doesn't get much better. And soon, as Kiowa Island became more and more popular, the partners decided to design and build a variety of world-class golf courses. And we did decide in early in the plan that we would like to get a variety of golf course architects involved. Gary Player and his firm did the first one, Jack Nicholas did the second, then Tom Fazio, then Pete Dye. Now, there are five world-class golf courses that are part of the Kiowa Island Golf Resort. Cougar Point, Turtle Point, Osprey Point, and Oak Point and the world-famous Ocean Course with its new clubhouse designed by Robert A.M. Stern. The Ocean Course hosted the 1991 Ryder Cup. It's hard to believe in today's world, but the Ryder Cup back then was really a booby prize for taking another PGA tournament. It was agreed with the PGA and Landmark and ourselves that we would move the Ryder Cup and we would build a golf course, which is now the Ocean Course. We were having a tournament on a golf course that had never been built. And so, the Ryder Cup moves across the Atlantic, 
hard by the ocean to Kiowa Island, South Carolina. Architect Pete Dye has created a masterpiece of engineering, building a golf course specifically for the 1991 Ryder Cup. The Professional Golfers Association of America proudly presents the 1991 Ryder Cup. It's the war by the shore. An event like that, with that much drama, it took us really and gave us the international exposure that we were looking for. Understandably, the American jubilation is complete. The Ocean Course will host the 2012 PGA Championship, one of the premier golf events of the season. The resort has been consistently named one of the top five tennis destinations in the country. Along with the resort's luxurious amenities, there's the five-star, five-diamond Sanctuary Hotel. With its ocean view rooms and its award-winning restaurants. We knew one day we would have private golf courses as, a, as an amenity for our owners to come down and, and enjoy Kiowa on the basis that they would be able to play a three and a half, four hour round of golf, which is a good round of golf for golfers. They don't want to be in the resort traffic. The Kiowa Island Club is a private club that offers the finest in amenities and service to its members, starting with the river course. The classic clubhouse sits on the Kiowa River, overlooking the 18th green. This 18-hole masterpiece, created by Tom Fazio, remains one of his favorite courses. Next to the river course is Sasanqua, a luxurious spa where you can experience Kiowa life as it's meant to be. Here, you can pamper yourself and take some time to relax and reconnect with the things in life that bring you joy. The Kiowa Island Club also includes a new state-of-the-art sports pavilion with the latest in cardio and weight training. You can play tennis or squash and swim in the saltwater lap pool. The Beach Club has a magnificent clubhouse also designed by Robert A.M. Stern and sits just off the wide 10-mile long beach. It has three swimming pools, one for families, a kiddie pool, and one reserved for adults only that sits quietly away from the clubhouse. And as golf became increasingly popular and as our club became popular, we had the need for a second golf course. The Seek, when we started, was flat tomato fields and we moved almost a million cubic yards of dirt, created uh, elevations in the terrain, and it, it turned out to be just a phenomenal golf course. So we wanted to create something that was reminiscent of the Lynx courses of, uh, of England and Scotland and Ireland, and who better to do that than Tom Watson. We had a wonderful experience with Tom. He gave us exactly what we asked for. As it unfolded, a buddy came to me and said, would you like to do a golf course here? And I said, you bet I would. I have to say it's, the, it's been the best experience uh, doing a golf course in my career. And the clubhouse is, is based on Charles Voisey's architecture, which I just love. Uh, Leonard did uh, just a wonderful job in shepherding the architectural form of the clubhouse, the way it's situated on the golf property. So the role model was to try to come up with a manor home that you see in Scotland and Ireland that overlooks the property. We elevated the clubhouse so that when you were playing golf, you would be able to see the clubhouse, not unlike if you were fox hunting and would be looking at a manor home somewhere in England or Ireland. It's a special place in golf. and It, it, it has a class uh, that um, you, you find in uh, only the, the, the top golf clubs in the, in the world. We had a fairly mature island and we had no support facilities. If you wanted a cup of milk, you had to get in the car and go about eight miles. The Freshfields area brings something that was lacking besides the obvious shopping needs and some, some nice things that are there. The idea that that's a place where you can go and see your friends. It becomes our town hall center of, center of activity. On a given weekend, there's a log jam in the Newton Farms uh, grocery store of uh, people talking to each other, and, and that was part of what we tried to do. That 
coffee houses, restaurants, and other programming events which we do throughout the year where we have a lawn, we bring farmers market, we have art, blues, concerts. So we have something going on all the time and it really has allowed the people in the Keor community to meet friends from Seabrook and other in, uh, parts of the south end of Johns Island. So when you look at the beauty of having something the size of Keel, which is really 10,000 acres, it allows you to really give a little bit of something for everyone. So we have in the far reaches very secluded marsh lots, we have beachfront lots, we have golf lots, golf communities, you know, we have larger houses, smaller houses, great place to raise kids. It's safe, you can um, put them on bikes, they can go to the beach. It's, it's really a, a, a place where uh, some wonderful people who are mostly still in the marketplace because this is their second home, they still have a main home somewhere. And yet they treat this like home. They come here and they join in uh, uh, the activities year-round when they're here. And I think that we created a lifestyle that people liked and they wanted to be a part of. The people are just so nice and so uh, active and vital and This is transporting, this is elevating. Today, it's a one-of-a-kind lifestyle experience we like to call a Kiowa life. <laughs>